Welcome back, everyone. I'm Kevin Carpenter, a volunteer at CPPCon, and I'm here with Matt, who graciously let me adjust his name because I want to get it out in a nice way. Um, Matt's a veteran speaker and instructor, and you've got double the content this year at CPPCon. You're teaching a class, and I believe you've got a talk as well. So before we get to that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, yeah, so my name is Mateusz Pusz, but you can call me Matt. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> Everyone calls me that, even in Poland. Uh, I'm hacking C++ for fun and living for more than 15 years, I think, right now. I worked at Intel for 13 years, doing many different projects and, and being busy in many different positions, from validations to architecture. Uh, now I'm principal software engineer and the head of the C++ Competency Center at IPAM Systems. I'm also active voting member and contributor to the ISO C++ committee. And also I joined recently Misra C++, where I try to help with, with safety and security in automotive and other industries. Uh, talking about my experience as a trainer, uh, basically I'm doing this nearly for 10 years right now, probably. And the, wow. at the beginning, I started to provide trainings internally at Intel. And mm -hmm. then for EPAM, for our customers, uh, and, and suddenly people started to, to just ask me to provide the question, the, the trainings for them. So at that point, I created my own company called Train80 and started to do this officially also outside of my companies and, and, and our customers. Nice. So this year you're doing a training on concepts, if I understand properly, right? How's, what, what all kind of topics are you going to cover in that? Yeah, so basically the, the training, uh, yes, it's about concepts, about C++20 concepts and how to uh, simulate concepts in the previous previous language versions. So basically concepts is one of the groundbreaking features of C++20, right? Uh, it will mm -hmm. change the, the way we write code and, and basically make everything much, much safer. Uh, for, for example, about concepts, uh, I can show you some slides that I'm working on right now for the conference on Monday uh, for the talk. So, uh, so here it is. Mm, this is what we are laughing at, right? This is C, this is something we don't really like too much. Uh, this is void pointer and void pointer, and this is nothing to do with types, right? And this right. is not what we, what we are used to because we have strong types in the language and strong types are much safer. But actually, we can write a Lambda like this one. Or we can write a function template that looks like this one. Or with C++20 generic functions, it will look exactly like this. Because this is exactly the same template, but in C++20, right? Or you can write class foo that takes any type T. How all of those examples are different for, from the first line, from the C case that we are laughing at, right? And um, basically, the difference is basically that, that, that the C case will fail at runtime and C++ cases will fail at compile time. But from the interface point of view, from the user experience, from documentation point of view, like opening cppreference.com or the oxygen generated documentation, you don't have any idea how to use this interface. And this right. is when concepts come. And, and this, is the, this is why this training is so important. And this is why it's important to change our, mm, let's say, our um, mm, interfaces, our uh, what, what, what we used to basically in our in our code to, to write, because we are putting type name or class anywhere in a, in a template, and we are not don't, not thinking much about it because this is what we always did. But actually, it's wrong. It's, it's creating those strange interfaces, and and they are not user friendly. Uh, if you are looking at the documentation, you don't know how to use it. You don't know what it returns. It's really really bad. And I, and I can when feel the, that. Where comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even, you know, as you mentioned that, you know, you and I were talking before, I am not a template pro by any means. And so seeing how concepts are going to help things, I will help the users such as myself that are writing more application based code as well. So I have to say, the switching to that screen, you've obviously have a lot of skill with the with the training. And so you know, are you finding the online training to, are you adapting well to it? Are you finding that it's working well with the people you're teaching now? Uh, yes, uh, actually I find the online version of the training uh, 
much better than I expected at the very beginning. Uh, of course, online and offline training, so face-to-face -face training will never be the same, right? They will provide different user experience, but it doesn't mean that any of those is, is, is worse. Uh, they are just different. There are mm -hmm. pros and cons on both sides actually here, right? right. Uh, for example, for online trainings, the, the benefits are that you don't have to travel. You don't have to pay for the travel. You don't have to spend time on the travel. There is no jet lag involved with it, right? <laughs> you don't have to pay True. for accommodation. Too. And, it, and basically training is shorter because you don't have to account like two days before and after to go there and back if you're going to the different continent. Uh, also, uh, you can just attend it from home or from, from your office. You don't have to, to take vacations or whatever to, to go there. And, and it's, so it's about the time, it's about the, about the uh, price. So it's less, less, less expensive for you to join. Also, I found out that basically people are enjoying some uh, features of online training much more than in face-to-face -face trainings. For example, in Zoom, we have breakout rooms. You can yeah. divide people to, to, to groups of three to five persons and they work independently in each room by themselves. And what I do, I, I just wander from, from the room to room to help each other out. And when nice. I'm helping one group, the other groups are not disturbed with my, with, 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 with my um, descriptions and, and, and helping. What, what happens in the room is that basically when I start to talk to one person because he has some problems, everyone is listening right. and basically are, are distracted. And with those rooms, it's much easier. And people also tend to network better when they, when, when they basically work in, in, in smaller groups. Uh, also, for, for example, another nice feature are polls that are also provided by, by Zoom. You can provide mm -hmm. frequent polls to verify the knowledge. Of course, you can do this the same in the, in the physical version of the training. But right. in many cases, those polls, those, those questions are being answered by one or maybe a few individuals that dominate the training because basically they know more or are mm, more, let's say, car like, like yeah. they have more courage to answer yes. C++ questions and all others just nod the, the head and you don't know if they <laughs> understand it or, or basically yeah. they, they, they just do it because they do it, right? Right. If you run a poll about all of the attendees on, on the online form, you get immediate feedback if people got it or not. And this is actually nice. way better in the online version of the training from my, from my experience. That's excellent. I, like I said, seeing you pop that up quickly, I, I can see where I'd be excited to attend the class from the quality of the training without a doubt. So at the conference this year, you've also got a talk you're giving, right? Uh, yes, uh, I will provide a, a workshop and a, and a talk, a talk about physical units library that I'm implementing for many years right now. I provided some talks about this subject on the previous conferences, but I was mostly scoping on the problems uh, mm -hmm. that, that is connected to the subject about the competition on the market, how they handle the problems or how the problems are generated by, by those solutions. But actually I never talked about, the, about my library, the thing that I'm working on. And basically what we are trying to actually standardize because we already spent a decent number of hours in the committee in order to standardize something like this. So, so this year I'm scoping mostly on my solution. I will talk mostly about, about the interfaces I will provide, about the, I will talk about, again about some problems and probably compare it to the competition again. But this time I will scope on my library, will, will show how my library addresses those issues. And basically, I would like to, to people to, to uh, basically get familiar with it, try okay. it, maybe even in production, because C++20 compilers are getting on the market right now. And yeah. some of them are already fit, nearly feature complete or will be by the end of the year. And provide the feedback immediately. So maybe we'll be able to standardize this for C++23. But if not, we'll try to get C++26 train. And... Yeah, basically, I, I don't want to be in a rush. I just want to make it ready first and then standardize, of course. Right, nice. No, I was going to say, I saw the, I saw bits of it because you were showing in your talk last year, I believe you were using the physical units libraries in your slides. And so it was interesting to see just the design of it. You know, I do more financial math because I work in credit card transactions, but to be able to turn mm -hmm. around and take something like kilometers per hour and just have it, you know, used in the math as a physical unit. That was really cool looking. So I'll be excited for your talk. So since you've been doing the online stuff, have you had a chance to use Remo, which is gonna be our platform this year? Do you have any thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I actually provided the talk on C++ on the C this year mm -hmm. and was using Cremo for all of the conference. And actually, I'm really excited about it. Maybe it's not the best quality of the video or audio, but mm -hmm. what matters is the really nice talk, nice tool for, for networking. I was yeah. amazed with the with the quality for in 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 this in this subject here. Mm -hmm. uh, I we are basically locked down, maybe not in houses, but outside of any let's say serious committee work or, or, right. or conferences for a year in, right now nearly, right? Because from from February March or, or something like this, we were not mm -hmm. able to travel. Yeah, and I didn't see my my friends from the C plus committee or from just community that I meet on every conferences for, for, for many months right now. Yeah. Being able to sit with them by one table on the conference and discussing about stuff uh, and catching up, basically, after a few months, it's a really, really nice, nice, nice thing. Nice. Um, and I think this is the most important part, actually, of attending the conference, offline or mm -hmm. online, right? Uh, it's not about the talks, because you can actually wait a quarter and see them on the, on, on the YouTube later on. It's about the right. networking. It's about the people. It's about talking with them and interacting with them. And Remo yeah. does a really good job here. Nice. Well, anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? I have to say it's been great talking with you today. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if, if we have some time to talk about other details. We can talk about things, about the hardware part of the, of the providing online trainings because we don't talk about it much, but... Basically, it matters. There were some questions from the instructors on the instructor channel of, CP, of CPCon, how to provide good quality um, uh, open online video feeds or, or basically training. Uh, as I said, Zoom is, I think, in my opinion, doing the best for online training. Mm -hmm. uh, it has all those breakout rooms, polls, and other features. Yep. Mm, uh, from the polls, actually, I, I, mm, I run through my uh, attendees on the online trainings. All of, them, all of them say that the most important is the audio quality. So you have to make sure that you have a decent voice. If you can yeah. afford, it's good to buy an, an external microphone. And I have one here on my desk in front of me. I can actually can, can show you this. Uh, let's yeah, please. allow me to switch the... So basically, this is this, is this Blue Yeti X that I'm using. And mm -hmm. this is the um, really nice microphone that actually... Uh, let's me be quite. It's I'm not sitting close to it in any means. Oh, let's see it. Uh, but it actually gets my voice pretty nicely. It's that's why I, I prefer this one over over the other microphones like 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 Rode. Yep. And and you can hear it. It works pretty nicely. And it doesn't no, bother the my. Is excellent. Yeah, and it doesn't also go into my my video frame from the camera because I, it it doesn't right. have to be close to my mouth here, right? Right. Uh, uh, so this is the most important aspect of, 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 the, of providing the online training, mm, good audio. If you care mm -hmm. about good video, first of all, you have to have decent lights. For those, I have yes. those lights, but of course, you don't have to buy such lights. But, yep. but you can sit in front of the, of the window, for example, or have some, some, some light in front of you. And then yep. it will be really, really, uh, should be enough, actually. This may be not, be not be really nice, but it will be enough because you probably are, are aware that Basically, the speaker icon is really small on the screen during the lecture, yes. so it doesn't have to have huge resolution. Yeah. But in order, we would like to use things like I'm using, so the green screen that's behind me. Mm -hmm. uh, then you may need to use some better camera. For this, I'm using this this uh, mirrorless camera from Canon. Mm -hmm. Okay, that basically provides me better resolution, better uh, uh, focused um, screen. That allows me to uh, to, to provide, provide green skin effects, effects much, much better. better. Uh, so so with this camera, it looks like this, and everything is fine. You nearly don't see the, the green screen here, and and, yep. and nothing not, nothing is yeah doing any problems. No, it works here. really well. Excellent. So so this is basically setup I use, and yeah, it, you should have at least two monitors or or three if you want to provide a training like this, because there there are a lot of windows to handle. You have to provide yeah. slides. You have to provide to provide things like uh, you control OBS. You can control Zoom. Mm -hmm. Zoom also has the dual monitor feature that, that is really useful. So at one on one screen you can see the slides. On the other one you can actually see the gallery of all the of the um, attendees. 
And actually, it's really important for everyone on the training to, to enable their video feed. Right. It, it has many advantages. First of all, it's uh, better for the presenter to talk because talking to the dark screen is much harder for the presenter. And yeah. you don't want to be bored in, in two or five day training. So if I get more fun from this and, and it will be easier for me, it should be also better for you. Another part is that if there are like 15 persons on the discussion on the Zoom channel, it's easier to communicate if you can see everyone there. And so you don't, you don't disturb each other that, that, that frequently in case of, of, of having those videos on, 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 some, on some screen. Right. And last but, but not least, it's fun for everyone to see actually, to, to see the faces of your old friends or to actually, if you don't know those because this is the online training on the conference, to actually get know each other better and do networking. If you know how everyone looks and, and it's easier to, to break ice. Yeah, no, that it is. Well, I think that's about the time we got today. I have to say, I really yeah. enjoyed uh, having you on and I look forward to hearing how your training goes and I'll definitely be attending your uh, talk on the physical units. Um, and again, thank you very much. I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. And see you on CPPCon. Sounds good. Bye-bye. See ya.